Welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Thousand One Games. I'm your host, Gaming J, and uh, today we're trying something a little interesting here. We've got Guitar Hero Metallica, uh, which is one of the games in the book of Thousand One Video Games. Let's play before we die. We've played a, a, a like half a dozen rock band and guitar hero games, and then, frankly, if you look up this game online, it's like eighty bucks. So uh, we're playing through alternative means today here, which means I can use a keyboard. Um, which, I mean, I, you know, uh, have played Guitar Hero Rock Band games on the channel before. I use the actual guitars. I, I kind of like the guitars. I, I mean, like everyone, I got caught up in the fad of uh, Guitar Hero and Rock Band, which seems to have faded these days. It doesn't really seem to be around anymore, but it was cool, and I still have the guitars. I still think they're kind of cool. However, um, I was thinking about it, and, like, my earliest experiences with a lot of Super Nintendo games... I mean, my earliest experiences were playing on the actual Super Nintendo. But then, years after the Super Nintendo kind of faded, uh, I got into emulators in high school. We discovered them, me and my friends, and we were playing Super Nintendo games. And, for instance, The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past is a game I never owned on Super Nintendo. I knew people who had it and loved it, but I never owned it. The first time I ever played it was on emulator, meaning the first time I beat that game was using a keyboard to control the game. And it just sort of made me think about like, oh man, like remember trying to play console games on a keyboard, you know? And uh, so I thought today, you know, let's give it a shot. Can you Guitar Hero on a keyboard? I just gave it a brief shot before I hit record and I got booed off stage. So uh, it's going to be interesting. We can switch to a controller. I don't have a way of connecting the guitar up today. So we're going to have to sort of fudge it as we go here. But um Guitar Hero Metallica also has obviously an interesting backstory of, you know, like, um, like this, this video a thousand percent is getting demonetized. Like Metallica not only will demonetize me, but if you guys remember the Napster days, they would like sue grandparents and six year old girls who had one of their songs. So, um, you know, hopefully I'm not in legal jeopardy here for playing this game, but, uh, I'll just have to like distort and mute the background music to some degree i guess i don't know what i'll do i get i'll just accept the demonetization what the hell do i care anyway so we'll give this one a shot with a keyboard for old nostalgia's sake and i was kind of thinking of it too so i know this is a long intro we'll get to the game you guys have seen guitar hero there's no surprises here um i was thinking about it too when i when i first emulated super nintendo games in high school and tried those out it's like um, Super Nintendo wasn't that old. In fact, I think it, it was still around. It was sort of like the PS1 and stuff were around. I think the N64 was certainly around. Um, so it was sort of like one generation old. And I was thinking about it. It would be like the equivalent today of emulating PS4 games. Or I guess you could say Switch games, which people... No, wait, not Switch, because that's current. I'm going to say, and then we can get into the whole user thing of how Nintendo really shut those folks down hardcore. Yeah, pro tip, don't don't emulate and pirate, um, you know, existing systems that companies are making money off. Um, or I guess, you know, the emulation isn't a big problem. It's the pirating. You know, you, re you really don't want to be doing that, folks. Um, but you get one generation ago. So this would be like, I guess, the equivalent of emulating Wii U. But that's not super impressive. Maybe we could think about this would be like emulating a PS4 game or e maybe even a PS3. But PS3 is pretty old, so this is so what I was doing in high school, playing the Super N Nintendo games, like the equivalent of emulating PS4. So we're emulating a Wii U game here, which is like two generations ago, so we're quite old now. Anyway, Nintendo, please don't sue me. All right, let's check out uh, Guitar Hero Metallica. We're going to go with a single. Uh, we'll do Guitar. Do it on Easy. Plug the guitar controller in, attach the controller strap, and ride the lightning, baby. <laughs> All right. This is going to be interesting. You know what? You know what is interesting? So, again, I tried this with the keyboard uh, just before hitting record there, just to see if it, it, it was even possible to do this. I didn't know. Um, all that music. <laughs> That's great. Uh, we'll watch this intro. Who knows? Maybe it's muted for you guys. If so, that sucks. Maybe I'll have to do a re-upload or something. This reminds me of like Kill Bill or something. Um, but uh, yeah, there's a lot of like muscle memory 
in those guitar controllers that isn't in a keyboard, believe it or not. So it's like, I I never owned Guitar Hero. I always played it at friends' houses. It was always when they had parties and stuff or just going over to a friend's house. Uh, as I say, I liked it. It was fun. It was, you know, a bit of a power trip. You feel like you're a rock star. It's pretty cool. Um, definitely, I think the companies overdid it and they did like Beatles, Metallica, and like, you know, I don't know. They did everything. Oh, this is a good song too. Everything had its own Guitar Hero song at one point. Um, but even for not owning it, I, uh, so it's hard to talk and play at the same time. I developed like quite a bit of muscle memory for the game. Anyway, this is a great song. This is like zombie land, Woody Harrelson and Jesse Eisenberg. <laughs> I'm just sort of barely hitting it. My timings aren't great. This is the kind of song I need to start on, though, where it's like just a couple of notes. The green and the red. Start me easy, folks. Yeah. Oh, God. It is so much harder to do with a keyboard. Unbelievable. I'm like, con I, I haven't concentrated this hard playing Guitar Hero in a while. Well, I think if you do go back and look at my other videos where I play other Guitar Hero games with the actual guitars, I'm similarly not talking a lot because I am concentrating. Oh, this is like, so here's the thing with Guitar Hero. Everyone liked to play it at parties. And this is what happened to the conversations, right? They just got sucked into this void of like, not only were the people playing it not unable to have rational conversations, but uh, the people like sitting around, like, like it really just did sort of pull your attention in. Oh God. I can't believe. Oh, this is so hard. Oh no, <laughs> it's getting harder. Okay, he's singing. We got a little break here. Whew. I like these really long single notes. I also don't think I equipped my whammy bar, so there's no keyboard key for that. Oops. Oh, I missed a lot. Oh, it sucks when you miss a really long one. Then you don't get that part of the song. The interesting thing about if you owned Guitar Hero, again, I never owned it. I only played at friends' houses. I think that's why I was never really got good at it, because it's like I couldn't practice at home, you know? Did you guys ever have games that, like, your friends owned, but you got good at just by playing it at their house a lot? I feel like actually Halo might be one for me, because I didn't own Halo until the Xbox 360, but I played it enough of people's houses that I got, like, decent at it. Or, no, actually, I did own the original Xbox. What am I talking about? I don't know. My first experience with Halo was I didn't own it, but I played enough with other people, so... Um... Totally lost my train of thought with this. Oh, I was going to say, like, I wonder if people who owned this game, who actually owned it, would sort of get urges like, oh, man, I kind of want to listen to Metallica, but I don't want to just listen to Metallica. Maybe I'll just play uh, Guitar Hero. Because the thing is, like, playing the game is like listening to a soundtrack, right? It's, it's very interesting. It's a hybrid game music. Um, trying to think of like if any other more recent games. Oh God. I'm doing okay actually. Ah. Oh no. It's all falling apart. Dun, 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 dun. 
So what is Metallica's music policy these days? I have no idea. I jumped into this. I mean, there's literally no way to avoid it. It's not like a normal Guitar Hero game where I could have, like, looked it up ahead of time and been like, alright, avoid this band and avoid this band. Like... When Guitar Hero Metallica is in the 1001 book, you just got to suck it up and hope they don't strike your YouTube channel. Boom. You know, because all the lost sales that this is going to entail for Metallica, having old gaming Jay play their song. Um, <laughs> it's funny that... Okay, hold on. I do want to come back to the idea of, like, are there any other games like this, but... When you think about what the whole copyright strike nonsense is on YouTube, it's like if you, um, you know, if the Mario movie comes out and you upload the full Mario movie, right? Like that, that's illegal. You're, you're pirating their stuff. People could go to your channel and watch the Mario movie instead of buying the Mario movie. That's why you're not allowed to do that because it's, it's sort of taking away a potential sale for Nintendo. And there's arguments about whether people would or wouldn't have actually paid for it if they couldn't get it pirated but whatever let's let's say yes yes um if for this for a video like this to copyright strike or take my uh ad revenue is basically saying look jay has put up a couple metallica songs here <laughs> he's talking over them they're incomplete with missing notes and people might think you know what I want to do in the year 2024 is I want to go and listen to For Whom the Bell Tolls, but I don't want to pay Metallica through any any means. Uh, so I'm just going to go and watch Jay's YouTube video, and that, that'll do it. Um, I know it's not 100% like that. I know there's more complexity to it than that, folks. I'm kind of glossing over it. But I mean, like, at some level, that's what they're saying. That's why they're allowed to, like, take my, uh, you know, 60 cents or whatever I'll make from the video, so... Uh, I'll find a different way to feed my family this this month, I suppose. But uh, anyway, just it, it's 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 just funny to me. I, I don't care one way or the other. Metallica, if you're listening, claim away. The video is yours. I mean, you made the music. Let's not let's not also let's not pretend it's all on. You know, I'm the one who's hard done by. Is uh, you know, musicians make cool stuff. They deserve to get paid for what they make. That's another way of looking at it. I mean, they made the music. Who am I to claim any right to it, right? But uh, it, it is amusing to think that at some level what the law is saying is that, like, I have created an illegal version of Metallica's song where somebody could come and watch this video instead of listening to a musical uh, track. Let me tell you that if, if I am your alternative option to listening to these Metallica songs than to listening to the real songs... You got problems. You got problems in life. Okay. I'm playing I'm playing the game and I don't even want to listen to this. I want to listen to the real songs. Uh, you know, you know the other thing too is like I wouldn't have said I'm a huge Metallica fan if you asked me. I'd be like, "Um, yeah, they're fine." But like this is the second song we're playing and I'm like, "Ooh, I like this one too," you know, like these are bangers. These are good songs. Maybe I'm maybe I've always been a Metallica fan. I just didn't listen to Metallica. But yeah, I like these songs. Anyway, um, so what are other games like Guitar Hero that have sort of like been totally unique and like sort of captured the zeitgeist of society? Pokemon Go comes to mind because, again, that one was so different. Um, that one's pretty old, though, now. Actually, I saw people recently playing Pokemon Go in a park, and I was like, huh, you don't really see that much. And they were, like, talking about strategies for capturing different Pokemon and stuff, and they were, like, at this park to capture certain Pokemon. I could overhear their conversation. I'm like... That's actually uh, a little interesting that anyone's still playing it. It's funny because it's like when Pokemon Go came out, people went nuts for it. Like even I had it. I tried it out. And uh, then it like faded away. Like last I heard, I had a friend and his mom was playing it. Surprisingly enough, she really got into it. And then that was about it. 
Uh, I don't. I didn't know anyone else who was playing at that point. But I bet if you look it up, it's still like one of the most played mobile games to this day of all time. Like, and I don't mean historically. I mean most daily active users. I'm sure it's like up there, you know. Um, which is like, who the hell is playing this? Where? Who are these users? It's just sort of like how people still watch The Simpsons, allegedly. I don't know a single human on Earth who still watches The Simpsons. I don't even know where it airs. I know it's still on the air. No idea who watches this show. It's still probably, like, pulling in pretty decent ratings. It's like, people are watching it. But it's like, they're all hiding. I don't know. <laughs> where are these people? There's, like, a ghost contingent. You know, if you told me that when I go to sleep... A whole other, uh, you know, set of people wake up and live in the world, and those are the people watching The Simpsons and playing Pokemon Go and stuff. I would be like, that makes sense. I felt like half the world's population was missing because things are popular, but I don't know anyone who actually does them. So, uh, so yeah, so there you go. The so Pokemon Go, maybe. I would, I would venture to say like something like Fortnite. Only probably Fortnite's even more popular than Guitar Hero ever was. And like Fortnite, I wouldn't say is uh, very innovative in the sense of, um, you know, like it's, it's uh, you know, a unique kind of game as, as all games are. But like Guitar Hero was like, okay, it wasn't actually a whole new genre they invented because these sort of like musical... Ooh, games had existed for a while but I mean like the idea of having a guitar that seemed pretty unique and again I'm not saying it's the first and only time it's ever happened and they absolutely not, not they had no precedence or anything but uh, it's the first time it became super popular right like Fortnite yes it's mega popular um, and you could go to things like Minecraft or mega popular whatever like there's certain games that are mega popular but they don't have like their own peripherals and people, people aren't going to, like, Fortnite parties, you know? People went to, like, uh, Guitar Hero parties. So, yeah, like, what other thing? So Pokemon Go, I think, you know, uh, however it stacks up to Fortnite in terms of daily users, I think is closer to what I'm talking about. Like, it's a phenomenon, you know? Like, your grandmother's playing it. Which I guess the Wii in general was kind of like that, right? Like, the Wii... The interesting thing about the Wii, the Wii was like one of the best-selling consoles of all time, at least in recent history. And the way that it did that, that is it tapped into the coveted retiree market. You know, you had like old folks, you had literal old folks home buying Wiis so that their residents could play uh, tennis and stay a little active. Now that, that's something. You know, I don't think any video game console since the Wii has appealed to like the octogenarian generation, but the Wii found a way, which I think is, I mean, we're going off on total tangents here. So bear with me. These are all my personal hypotheses and theories, poorly researched opinions. Let's call them. I like the sound of that. Actually, poorly researched opinions. I, I personally suspect the Wii U failed because the Wii succeeded. If that makes sense. I think what happened with the Wii is it was never as popular with gamers as Nintendo thought. Because what the Wii tapped into, what the Wii did very well, is it tapped into casual gamers in a way that a system hadn't just in a long, long time. I think the original Nintendo, the first NES, tapped into that market too because it's like like nobody had seen anything like it so it's like everyone wanted to play nintendo even grandparents right and then that kind of faded away and then the super nintendo was like more for kids and teens and, and actual gamers and stuff and same with the n64 and stuff and then along comes the wii and you have like retirees moms you know like parents buying this system it's going nuts it's selling more than anything else nintendo's like we did it we're number one again and they're like, you know what? Let's double down, make a Wii U. We're going to keep it innovative and different and all this stuff. And the audience will come. And then what they realize is pfft, nobody came for the Wii U, right? The Wii U flopped really hard. It sold worse than like the Dreamcast, which is the system that killed Sega, right? Um, nothing's going to kill Nintendo, though. They're a juggernaut. So they survived. But I think 
it's like Nintendo saw the success they had with the Wii and thought that they had the formula and thought that they couldn't fail, basically. And they're like, well, we're just going to totally innovate again. The Wii U is going to be awesome. And they put out the Wii U and it failed. Um, and I think it's because they expected the casual gamers and stuff to come over. And they thought that a whole bunch of hardcore gamers were, were in love with the Wii. And really, it was like more of a mixed story than that, right? Um, and the grandparents are not going to buy a Wii U. Plus, the title, the name Wii U was, you know, it caused confusion. People didn't even know it was a new system. I mean, when you sell the original console to grandparents, you can't be upset when you give it a, a mild change to the name. They don't even know it's a new system. So there were lots of things that caused the Wii U to fail. But I almost think it was like a combination of like cockiness and Nintendo taking the wrong lessons from the Wii, not really understanding who they sold it to that made them blunder in the Wii U. And then they pulled it back together. You know, a lot of people have said the Switch couldn't have existed without the Wii U first. Like the Wii U was a stepping stone to the Switch. And they obviously figured it out for the Switch, right? Like it's another like hugely uh, popular system. Um, although that's an interesting system because they moved away from their purely console sales to pulling in mobile slash console. So it's like debatable whether they ever really got the console fans back. But what they did instead is sold a console system to mobile fans who, uh, you know, there was a lot of, obviously, people who want mobile console gaming, not phone games. So anyway, uh, they've done they've done very well. They figured it out. But yeah, I've always kind of thought that uh, the Wii U partially failed because of the lessons the Wii taught Nintendo were misinterpreted. But anyway, uh, we played a couple of songs here. <laughs> Look at that guy's butt wiggle. Or is it a girl? I think it's a dude. These are actually cool animations. Yeah! Rock on, dude. I actually like this. This is pretty hilarious. Metallica bands needed. Apply within. Alright, let's play one more song. I was about to wrap up, but you know what? Um, Let's rock on. Instead of wrapping up, let's rock on. For one song. Create your new show rocker. Oh, this is where you get to like customize your dude. Um, whatever. <laughs> whatever. 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 I'm ready to rock. I, I kind of feel like the whole customizing the look of your character. I don't know. I, I don't know if that's going to be around in 20 years. Do people care? Do people care? I don't know. I guess people... You know, in some games where you really can customize the look of your, your guy or your gal, I guess it's kind of fun to make them look how you want. But it, it does sort of feel like a little... It's sort of like how every video game has a little RPG element in it now. You know? Um, every video game has a little character customization in it now. It's sort of like as video games have evolved, little tidbits have like sunk in and just become standard in every game, whether it really needs it or not. So like character customization, RPG elements, unlockables, every game, every game has unlockables now, like no matter what, like it's just part of gaming. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I don't begrudge that uh, being able to make your guy look the way you want is in there, but I kind of find I'm, it's like for the first 10 years that came out, it was interesting. But now at this point when, a game is like, customize your character. I'm like, skip or like randomize, you know, like, I'm like, whatever. Like, just you, you tell me what my guy looks like. I don't care. <laughs> sure. They show you like a default. You're like, yeah, close enough. Oh, uh, we got uh, for whom the bell tolls again. I thought they would give us a different song. Maybe it's my fault for not paying attention to the menus. Frankly, I like this song. So we're going to listen to it again, folks. It's so metal to, like, just do what you want and not care if your YouTube fans like it or not. So that's what we're going with. I'm being the ultimate rock star. And by the way, I'm getting used to the keyboard. I thought I have a controller here. I thought we might have to switch over to the controller. Again, don't have the guitar worked out on how to play in this uh, alternate means. I think I already said I was emulating, so... But shh, don't tell Nintendo or Metallica. Oh, God, it's like the worst combination. Maybe I should have actually pulled my disc out 
Got my uh, Wii set up for this one. Oh, crap. I do actually own this, so there's that. But the interesting thing is... So, well, before I get into that, it's like... <laughs> it is just funny how it's like the one... The one Wii game I decided... The one Wii Rockstar game I decided to emulate is the one by, like, the two most litigious companies out there. Um... And now I lost my other train of thought. Saying I have... I could dig it out... I don't know. I don't know what I was thinking. Just trying to focus on these. The problem is I'm trying to talk and I'm getting, like, distracted by... Hard parts. And if you're good at rock, Guitar Hero or Rockstar, you're probably looking at this. Being like, this is not hard, Jay. Oh, God. Woo! This, this song will forever remind me of Zombieland. Great movie. Wish I had the whammy bar set up. Um. Oh, I know what I was going to say. Yes, so I do own this game. Interestingly enough, Metallica and Nintendo got the exact same amount of money out of me for purchasing this game as for, uh, you know, playing it on this emulator here, which is zero dollars. You know why? Because I bought it used. So that means that from Nintendo and Metallica's perspective, it should not matter to them one iota how I am playing this game. Either way, they didn't get my money. There was a used game shop in town that got my money. Or was it eBay? I forget. I went through a phase where I, like, uh, just was, like, scouting for... Oh, I gotta itch my nose. Oh, shit! Oh, I gotta itch. It's too itchy. Damn it. <laughs> okay, we're back. Um, but I went through a phase where, <clears throat> obviously, you know, a couple years after in the, being in this Thousand One Quest, I'm like, I guess it's gonna happen. I guess I'm going through the whole book. So I had, like, a list on my phone. And whenever I went into a used game shop, I was, like, leaf through their games. And especially if they had, like, a like a set of, like, games that were just the discs. Like, no cases or whatever. Because I'm like, I'm not picky. I'm not, I'm not collecting a Thousand One games. I'm playing them, so... Give me the disc, I'll play it, I'll sell it. <laughs> you know, try and get some money back out of it. Um, so, uh, so yeah, I would uh, just sort of leaf through, especially if they had a bargain bin, and anything that was on a good price, I would buy it. Even if I was like, I don't think I'll play this for four years. Um, if the price was right, I would pick it up. That's what I did with this one. Oh shit! I was looking at my score. You you can't even look at your score in this game because if you do, you'll like miss notes. Like there's just no stopping. This is kind of like an auto runner. It's an auto runner pattern game. It's funny, like, playing on the keyboard, too, I'm kind of feeling like, oh, you know, like, my typing skills are really being exercised here. <laughs> Wasn't that a thing with Guitar Hero when people played with the controllers? They started to feel like, hey, I could really play the guitar, you know? But it's like a false sense of security because guitars are, like, way more complex. I mean, I think a number of people did get into guitar as a result of Guitar Hero. Took lessons and stuff and, like, yeah, like, it, it spurred an interest in music. That's pretty cool. But uh, there's that famous South Park episode where uh, the kids are all into uh, Guitar Hero. And, um, you know, they're like, oh, we're just going to play the acoustic version. They bring out the controller and they're just like, click, 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 click. And it's like, yeah, it's you're just clicking a controller. It really doesn't have too much bearing on the actual song. But anyway. Anyway, this has been Guitar Hero. Metallica edition. Um, one of the games in the book, a thousand of the games you just play before you die. What can, what can we say? Um, if you like Guitar Hero and Rock Band and Metallica, you're going to love it.
You're gonna love it. It's, uh, you know, if you're one of those folks, one of those folks who still plays Pokemon Go, still plays Guitar Hero, you know, you you probably will love this. Um, you watch The Simpsons, you're a big Simpsons fan. Um, no, even, you know, if you have a guitar, maybe it's in your closet, you have to dust it off or whatever, but, uh, but you really love Metallica, this would be a good one to play, I think. Now, the downside is buying this game, um, I think it's like a minimum of 60 to $80. Whatever system you're looking at, it's crazy. Um, it is interesting how like most used uh, games like the Wii and the PS2 and PS3 era and stuff haven't really retained their value. But like, of course, Metallica one would because it's sort of like, again, it's this weird cross between like a game and music. So, uh, But anyway, nothing new here necessarily compared to any of the other Guitar Heroes. So really, I think the people who were buying and playing this back in the day were the people who loved Metallica, right? And it was it was kind of cool. Like if you were a fan of Metallica or the Beatles or something, they would make themes of your your band, your favorite band. You could like now buy that game and play it um, instead of playing just rock band and having to play a whole bunch of other bands. Like you could get your favorite band. Like that that was actually a cool idea. It was smart marketing too, I will say. And then if we can sort of take a more critical view, I will say. We've got how many Rock Band Guitar Hero games in the 1001 book? Um, this didn't have to be in there. I, I think one or two, I think one or two good Guitar Heroes, maybe one Rock Band, that's all that should be in the 1001 book. This book has too many, and frankly, Metallica, Guitar Hero, it's interesting that they franchised and that, you know, but we already did the Beatles one. Um kind of interesting too maybe you can make a case for the beatles being in there because they're the friggin beatles but i'm sorry metallica you're no beatles and as far as a thousand one book goes you shouldn't be in there so um i don't know i'm not saying the game isn't good i'm just saying if we're thinking about like the book how many guitar hero games do we need and frankly also i will say i think this is our last one i think we're done with guitar hero we're done with rock band i'm sorry if i sound positive about that if you are a guitar hero rock band fan but again i'm not saying the franchise isn't good but i'm just saying that the games are not all that different the one thing that differs is the song right and the songs the songs change so it's like yay different songs the game plays the exact same you know they they do put some effort into making things stylized and like look like the band but i mean it's the same game <laughs> it'd be like if mario one was in the book just five times for no reason you know like how many times can you play mario one um anyway so we're done with guitar hero we're done with rock band um it was a wild ride um, there's still cool games, there's still fun party games and all that stuff, but, uh, I think, I think we've had our fill. So guys, whatever you think of my opinions, my, my inane ramblings, what, what did I call them? My uninformed, um, uninformed opinions, whatever, I don't know. Agree, disagree, you know, complain to me in the comments, love me, tell me how right I am, how wrong I am. Whatever you would like to do. Just keep it civil. Um, guys, I hope you did have fun here today. Um, and uh, if you did, don't forget to like the video, subscribe, all this stuff. And other than that, I will catch you in the next one. Until next time, my friends, you take care of yourselves. And peace.